All right. It is Hello Again Wednesday. This is episode number 77, and I am live uh, early uh, today due to uh, I have a scheduled meeting that I have to participate in uh, real soon. So uh, we're doing it. Uh, an early hello again Wednesday. So you there in the in the Midwest, you're like, wow, man, it's our it's only uh, 11:30, and so uh, yeah. While you're eating lunch, join me for these few minutes as we do hello again Wednesday today. I am so glad you are watching, or whenever you are watching, I'm glad that you are watching. And please participate. Cle please click the follow button, the like buttons, the share buttons, whatever you need to do and then always participate by answering the question of the day or telling the story that goes along with the questions you can not only see me here on facebook you can see me on our church web page uh, which is culvercitychurchofgod.org uh, org or you can also see me on youtube which is my youtube channel brent miller what's on his mind and you can still join in in watching these and join Joining along with the conversation. Why? Because you are my special guest. You're the guest of the day. So when you respond, that's you. You're the guest of the day, the person of the 15 minutes of fame, I would say, because that's how I try to keep it down to. So please join along and uh, uh, talk along with me, all right? Uh, but I am so glad that you have joined. So the Today's episode, with uh, it's called Scraping the Jar. The question of the day is this, ready? Do you stick your peanut butter knife into the jelly jar, or are you, or are you the one who sticks your jelly knife into the peanut butter jar? Meaning, did I say that right? Peanut butter knife, you put peanut butter on it and then you spread and you stick it in the jelly, or do you stick your jelly knife and then you put it in, into the peanut butter jar? Which one are you, or do you even do anything like that? That's the question of the day. That always, and I've talked about this way in the past. It does remind me of that Reese's commercial back in the 70s. Hey, you stuck your peanut butter in my uh, chocolate. No, you stuck your chocolate in my peanut butter, you know, because there's always an accident happens with the two situations and they become one creating Reese cups. That's what it reminds me of. But the question is because Boomer's always asking me, uh, asking who stuck uh, jelly into the peanut butter jar. That's how this whole, actually, that's not how this whole thing started. That's one of the things for the question of the day was. Uh, uh, you know, there, and there's other thoughts that I have like this because when I talk about commercials, there's the Tootsie Roll one. I love that. Uh, I saw some suckers coming through the house uh, lately, and it's what? How many licks does it take to get to the the center of a Tootsie Roll? Those are some of the pictures that you saw at the very beginning of this episode. Oh, and the the owl would always go a one, a two, a three crunch, and he would he would crunch it. You know, just some things there of uh, uh, how many uh, licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll. The whole reason I started this thought process, though, for Hello Again Wednesday 77 was uh, Nutella. And so th let's give this. This is a two for question. There's the peanut butter jelly knife question. And then there's this. What's the best way to get the most Nutella out of a Nutella jar? And so um, I, I'm not even a Nutella fan. Um, I, I actually don't like it, but I, I do work with it quite often through the week. And um, there are some things that I had thought about of an invention. You know, what's the best way to get the most out of your Nutella jar? And you know what I came up with as an invention? What if Nutella put them into like a toothpaste jar, uh, uh, tube, you know, because for me, I can squeeze a toothpaste, to toothpaste tube and get almost everything out of it. I mean, I can squeeze it and you do that little pinch at the end to where it's like scrape, scrape, scrape and pinch it at the end. I can get almost all the toothpaste out of a toothpaste. So if Nutella put it in here, I could almost get all of that expensive Nutella out of 
uh, the the thing that it would be in. So then as I'm I'm getting ready for today and I'm you know getting my pictures and stuff like that, lo and behold, I have discovered that uh well let me say this first because that this would be an invention right and i years ago i probably talked about this too um i had a thought process of an invention of uh being tall and the strollers baby strollers are always sh for like short people and so i was like man if i could just figure out a way to clamp on some big old handles then I could stand straight up while pushing a baby stroller. And lo and behold, with that great invention idea, I was about to make millions and millions of dollars. Someone had already done it. Maybe not as good as what mine was going to be, but they had already done it. So it was already done. And so I say that because as I was preparing for today, this Nutella thought process in the into here had already probably been beaten out because... Um, and you, you'll see it at the end too. The picture with Nutella has a funky spoon for scraping Nutella out of a jar. Someone had already thought, hey, we made this jar and it's so hard to get all this expensive Nutella out. People are complaining, so they created a spoon to uh, scrape that Nutella out of the jar. And you know what it reminds me of? Uh, for uh, those who live in the snowy areas, remember when they came out with the ergonomically correct snow shovel? And so it's that funky snow shovel with the handle goes like this and down and like that. And uh, I never used it. I always thought, well, man, that's really weird. And, and uh, I don't know. It, it probably does work. It probably saved a lot of backs. I don't know. Someone invented, um, and it's probably the same people that invented the spoon for uh, scraping Nutella because that's what it reminds me of when I uh, look at it. And so now in saying this, the more I think about uh, uh, things like that, the more I discover if you take the time, see all that said and done, though, if you take the time to uh, look around and as you look around, you will discover things that are or someone that is better or it's the best or maybe it's the best there ever was. If you would just take a few moments to do a little bit more looking and and not so much on myself. Um, and then, like I said, other people, they created spoons rather than this and they created the shovel. Um, uh, you know what? They created the ball on this. You remember when you used to move your uh, your mouse around and some people would bang it on the on the desk and stuff. Um, I do love the ball motion uh, to uh, just use my finger. It's so much easier. But you had to look around to find this stuff to find the best of the best. You know what? I rep <clears throat> excuse me. There's something that's even better, or it is the best. When you stop and take a look, um, I tell people in church that even though, I'm going to go this direction, even though Hollywood is just up the street, Hollywood, they steal from the scriptures. That's right. They steal from the scriptures. They they pretend like they've, they've created these great lines, yet, you know, thousands and thousands of years before they, quote, created the line, it's already been said. And so um, how do I know this? Because in, you know, like I said, stepping back, I discovered some things. Uh, there's the new, there's the new Batman. My, my, my mouse is messed up. There's the new Batman movie that, that came out and I'm a Batman fan. The older Batman movies had a line and it was where um, Batman would show up and the criminals would be going, Hey, who are you? And Batman in the older versions would go, I'm Batman. And we love that line. You quote, you know, goofing around with kids and stuff. You'd quote that line a little bit. Some of you never will, but I've quoted the line. It's a cool line. I'm Batman. It, it's like this strength uh, line. Well, in the new Batman movie, the Batman, uh, they have a line and it's also, um, you know, okay. Batman's asked, who are you? And this time he says, I'm vengeance. 
And I'm like, oh wow, yes. Yeah, I mean, that's that's really cool. It kind of goes off of that other one, but it's it's a little bit stronger, a little bit uh, deeper. But then I began to think about me. I go, man, I think that line's already been done, you know. And by someone that might be better than Batman. <laughs> if you're a Batman fan, don't take, don't get offended. You know, I'm just gonna tell you how it is. Now I'm gonna go into a little bit of scripture because I told you that's where they steal the stuff from. In Psalms 94, verse one, it says this: "O Lord, the God of vengeance, O God." of vengeance let your glorious justice shine forth and i like that one because going back to batman that's how i think batman is when he talks about he's vengeance it's because he wants justice to be served yet that's already been said and done by someone better than batman by god and god has passed that down uh ge generation to generation to uh, us through scriptures. Now, just, just talking about, man, my glasses are uh, messed up too. Just talking about uh, uh, a superhero-like thing, why not pick the best of the best? So slow down and discover the best of the best. Um, uh, the world today, uh, even with the greatest of superheroes, is still messed up. I tell people that all the time. It is messed up. Step back, look back breathe a little it's messed up but it has been messed up a very very long time yet there is hope there's hope in something better if you know of a story of a man who uh was very wealthy had a lot going for him had everything going for him a man by the name of job in in job's story uh we understand being messed up in Job chapter 20, verse 22, it says this, in the midst of plenty, meaning if you, you think you have all this that you have, in the midst of plenty, they will run into trouble and be overcome by misery. And like, wow, Job, and Job understands misery. And so he understands plenty too, but he also understands, man, you can be overcome by this misery. I'm going to get to some better stuff because even Job had better stuff. You got to read his story. But there's even better stuff as you go through uh, this thought process of the best of the best. Psalms 112 verse 6 says, such people will not be overcome by evil. Who kind of people won't be? What kind of people won't be overcome by evil? Those who are righteous will be long remembered. It also says in the longest chapter of the book uh, of the of the bible psalms 119 uh, verse 133 it says this guide my steps by your word so i will not be overcome by evil remember what i said to discover now that we have something that has a, a plan a game plan to not be overcome by evil you just got to read it check it out study it learn about it is there someone that is the best of the best? Well, Jesus has a conversation with his disciples and that conversation is recorded in John chapter 16. And it says where Jesus is talking to his disciples. I have told you all this. So you have to go back and look, what did he tell them? I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. So we have the best of the best who has overcome the world. And if he can overcome it, and he says that how he lives in you with his spirit, when he has that, you too, I too can overcome the trials. I can overcome the things that are gonna come my way. They're gonna come, I can overcome them, and I can also be at peace in him. Ready? Well, it's not. I was usually I, I'm ending my, my segment with it's almost 2 p.m. on the West Coast. Well, it's not almost 2 p.m. out here on the West Coast, but we will still have our Bible study 
at 2 p.m. downstairs in person or via Zoom, or I might, uh, I'll even have it on Facebook. I tried doing that last week, and you know, in the middle, our Bible study is one hour long. In the middle of the Bible study, it, you ever have something to talk about overcome? It, it hit me, man, something's wrong. I didn't, so I messed up somehow. And sure enough, I did not hit the go live button for the Bible study on Facebook. So they only got half of a half of a segment of the Bible study. I'm going to try and do the whole thing for them. Those that are watching on Facebook, I'm going to try and do that. Now, hey, if you can't join us for our Bible study, because our Bible study, Pastor Mark is leading us. We're almost done with the book of Acts. And so he's leading us in the book of Acts right now to uh, finish out our Bible study. But if you can't join us, in any of those avenues I suggested, please check out a Bible-believing church near you. Walk into one of their studies. Maybe you'll see someone who is sharing about the best of the best, and you can join along with that. So what are some of your scraping the jar stories? Or are you the culprit who sticks your dirty peanut butter knife into the jelly making your peanut butter sandwich? Or are you the one who sticks your jelly knife into the peanut butter making your peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? Make sure you leave them in the comments, either on Facebook or on YouTube, or leave them as a complete story. And please let me share them as we can join in on some of the conversation. Why? Because you are my special guest, and I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday on Hello Again Wednesday.